in the comments threads for those three uh, other two songs that we've done, this song has been dropped. Like, you know, Moon Age, yeah. Moon Age, Moon, you know. So Moon Age, I, I think wait, for that. Scene, wait for that. I yeah. think this is one scene as, um, uh, like you had mentioned in the beginning of this video of, of our discussion here, uh, that you're surprised you never heard it before because a lot of people look at it as, hey, this is, this is really a standout. So, yeah, I think that's what you're getting at there. Oh, absolutely. And also, I think with the album, too, I, I think that, you know, I think about Sgt. Peppers for some reason. OK, you know, you had, you know, yeah, Sgt. Peppers, the song, and then you had Little Help for My Friends. Right. And those are really good songs. And then you had Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. You had yeah, like that like, third. Wait, you, oh, it was like song, right? it was almost like that third and then almost like that. Boom. Like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> you know. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Into the Music. My name is Gregory, or Greg, and that guy over there, he's Chris, or Christopher. Chris, or Christopher, how you doing today? <laughs> you go formal or casual. Yeah, okay. whatever. Just trying to yeah. cover all. all you really want to know how I'm doing today? Yes, I do. I'm going to say I'm great. <laughs> Good. And I'm going to accept that answer. Okay. okay. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to ask you, what do you got for me? What do you got for the audience? Tell them. Um, tell me. Okay. Uh, in our continuation of covering the Bowie album, Ziggy, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, the long name, the long title, um, we're going to, we're up to the third song in that, on that album. Uh, it's called Moon Age Daydream. And for those of you who want to follow along with the, uh, us covering this album in song order, the first one would be Five Years, which we've put out already. Second one is called Soul Love, which we put out recently. So now we're on the, this. This is the third. And um, I hope you're tuning in for the whole series. So. And, I, and I'm going to also in the notes section, I'll also put the links of the other yeah, yeah, okay. the other episodes as well. So we'll have it all covered. All right, cool. cool. So I'm. I'm going to go off in whatever chamber that I got. Yeah, the chambers, yeah. Yeah, I got so many to choose from. I'll yeah, choose the Bowie. That's what now. I'm going to choose the right. Bowie chamber and uh, and check and I'll wrapping check it out. At my, wrapping at my chamber door. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come back right here and we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm an alligator. Coming for you I'm a space invader I'll be a rock and rolling bitch for you Keep your mouth shut Just smoke a like a big monkey bird And I'm about to knock my brain for the world Keep your back a bit i really like where that change up right there to this verse and the one before that too where all of a sudden you hear like the background like mm -hmm, and then the piano is coming in too 
it was a little bit more um, noticeable in the first time around than this one right now, but still, it's just so, again, it's just a really good change up. I love that. Let me bring myself back down. <laughs> and uh, let's go. Love that. I love that. That's really cool. Bringing that back. This is a four minute and 45 minute song, but it seems like it's flying by. All right, so I'm back, and wow. uh, this this was, you know, I can't believe that I never heard this on any radio station, any of the rock stations. I mean, they really had to just keep playing the same it's boat stuff song, over isn't it? and yeah. over. The same three yeah. or so songs from this album over and over and over. Yeah, they couldn't ex- City, uh, Ziggy Stardust. They couldn't expand it now, of course. You know, I couldn't have like possibly opened up the door and just go in or just buy the album, you know, which I never did. Um, so, well, it is kind of surprising because you would think that this was one of the well, actually, actually, people who know this album think it's maybe the best track on it. Some of them, it was phenomenal. And, and if I was not sure about it, right, like you know, three quarters of the way, then boom, that ending, you know, when the guitar. That guitar fade out. I mean, it wasn't just the guitar. They had all these crazy. Yeah, a lot sounds. of things came in. Yeah, a lot of things going on, right? A lot but of instruments going on in this uh, playing in this. That song. that was the 
that was the icing on the cake, you know, because it was, it was a nice big, yeah. you know, moon age daydream cake. So, right. uh, you know, that said, um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good actually. Moon age yeah. Moon right. Age. Yeah. 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 So, um, and there were like all these little night, you know, slices of like this or that, you know, so I'll just kind of like from, uh, beginning to end, um, the, uh, what I liked about, well, a lot of things I liked about it, but, um, kind of things I was sort of paying attention to. So I was really, we, you gave me a lyric video and it was like, <laughs> like, you know, minute in, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to have Chris tell me what the song's about because the words, you know, they were really cool and they were interesting, you know, yeah. and he's just belting them out. You know I mean? He's just like, you know, he could have been singing <laughs> any kind of word, whatever. It's probably just, hard to, it would be hard to tell what he's saying uh, for half the song if you didn't right. have lyrics in front of you. So you know whatever he's singing, he's putting his. Oh, so you were soul. looking at the lyric. You were, you were looking at the lyrics in the beginning, and then. Oh, absolutely. Kind of well, okay, and then, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I there's mean, enough going on there. Yeah. Right, and of course, just seeing where you are with it. As this whole song's going, on, I'm still looking at the words, but by that time, at some point, I'm not trying to make sense of it. You know, if anything, something is like little catch words or like interesting lines are jumping out out at me. Yeah. Like this one thing, or, or a couple lines here. Keep. I think this is where like the switch up was um happened a couple of times where he's like keep your electric eye on me babe put your radar gun to my head and Reagan. what was interesting about that change up i loved it where um all of a sudden you had like this like this humming you know like it was bowie maybe someone else yeah, whatever yeah, but you had like yeah. a mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. i love that and at, as that is going on all of a sudden you hit like this piano was coming in too mm -hmm. um and uh, so that was really interesting. That was like a couple of times. There was a switch up um, of like um, a whistling sound. A, yeah, it's um, interesting. That I don't know if that, that. Was, didn't sound like him whistling or anybody whistling, but it sounded like a whistle, whistle kind of like instrument. So yeah. I was really wondering like what that was, because that was there was like a little bit of lightness with that particular yeah. part. You know, it was a little different than the other switch yeah. ups. Um, and then I think it went back to that, you know, uh, a verse him, then again, that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, again, you know, keep your electric eyes on me, babe, you know, put your radar gun to my head. I, I, I just, you know, you're going to make yeah. sense of this in like in two minutes, but no, um, I, it's um, really, really, really interesting, you know, yeah. and yeah, no, so go this ahead. Was, uh, this was actually written uh, before, uh, before the Ziggy Stardust songs. Um, and it happened to fit in. Uh, I don't think it was intentionally written for this album, but it fit in because wow. Ziggy Stardust is, a, um, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a, an extraterrestrial. So yeah, he's got all this sci-fi stuff in it, right? Right. You know, I'm an alligator. He's all these, you know, he's, he's different forms of things. That's he's right. A, he's probably yeah, one of those alligator. reptile people. You know that people believe in. You know what I'm talking about. Um, no. reptilians. <laughs> yeah, some people think there's pe other people are these reptilian things. I don't wow. know that much about it, but it's one of these conspiracy theories because uh, we don't have enough of those, you know. Um, <laughs> and um, he says, "I'm a space inv invader. I'll be a rock and rolling bitch for you." All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then it's got some other references to things, but um, he actually uh, this came out. This was released as a single. When Bowie uh, was uh, had had a band called, let me see, he had a band called Arnold Corns. It's a good thing that band didn't make it with that name, which was it. Uh, he got the name from Arnold, the song Arnold Lane from Pink Floyd. Okay, you know Arnold Lane, right? No, I don't. About the um, cross-dressing guy, they throw no. for cross-dressing. He's stealing women's clothes off the laundry lines of the <laughs> yeah, clothes lines. <laughs> anyway, I saw a, I saw a, um, I saw a video of Bowie doing that song with Pink Floyd. Uh, right. Pink Floyd. Uh, he was singing it. Okay. So anyway, That's so it was, it was done by the Arnold Corns in 71. And um, so they re-recorded it for this you know, when he was with these guys. Okay. And, um, one of the big standouts, of course, is Mick Ronson on guitar. Yeah. Especially just that opening. I know that name. That yeah. opening uh, was really powerful. You know, especially after five years and 
Soul Love, the two songs before it, were, which were kind of kind of chill in a way, you know, and this was like a boom, even with that first chord. Bang. Yes, yes. And um, also the delivery of, of the lines, you know, of the, of the vocals. Now that that uh, whistling thing, I just found this out when I was preparing for this. Um, I thought it was a, like, you know, a flute or something, but it's just a penny whistle. Okay. So one of those things that six halls I, play I with thought, the okay. I just didn't know what the freaking call yeah. and it. And, play, I think yeah. he's playing that one. He also plays sax on this. So okay. he's, he's just an all around musician, man. He, it's just good stuff. And this was just a powerful song. I was really looking forward to hearing this one because out of the first three we've done now, I thought yeah. this was the one probably, I think you appreciate, I knew you'd appreciate the other two, but I think this one would have hit you the hardest. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, depending on how loud you had the volume up, you know? <laughs> oh, no, I have. I always had the volume up. No, I mean, musically, well, I think the first one was, was I mean, both of them. I mean, they, they were both different. Um, I think this is one where I'm going to have to, like, listen to the whole album again, beginning to end. Right? So as I do this one by one by one. Yeah, and then gotta, listen to it. Got to go back. Got to go yeah. back. Yeah. Um, this one probably, I would say, and it's not a diss in like the other two, you know, just, I guess, probably like the strongest out of both of them musically. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. And I think that beginning part, like you mentioned, and then that end, you know, where, um, you know, I just kept thinking about like the radar gun, you know, because as the guitar is coming in and there's, I don't know if the guitar was making the sound or there was another instrument that was like right, you know, like at the same time sort of bringing it like a different cra sort of crazy sound like almost like a like if you picture a radar gun being shot you know maybe like you know in those old movies black and white like it was like this kind of real sort of you know like this looping kind of like like weird sound you know, know almost you're like, to something but i have no idea what the old movies i know <laughs> or maybe like star wars or something like you know when they had their like sabers or something like that and they were like oh, okay. and, swishing and, sound. And, and like a swizzle but like a real high-pitched swizzle sound it was like it was just kind of go a swizzle sound a swizzle. <laughs> <laughs> i thought you said, you said swizzle swish. so i'm going with swizzle no i said swoosh man you said swizzle oh i thought you said swizzle <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious man this should that should be a word you can't just have swizzle it sounds swizzling right you have to make a swizzle sound well because there was a swish and you would hear like because then like swish is kind of like heavy like shh you know no it's like swizzles you know so yeah but yeah so that swisher thing people used to mop the floor they're gonna have a competitor now called the swizzle. <laughs> the swish. <laughs> that's the swish. yeah the swizzler but, uh, I'm going to get yeah. on that. I'm going to go to Sharks and everything. And I'm going to try to pitch that to them. Yeah. Um, so that said, yeah, no, this was. Oh, yeah, Shark the Sharks? Yeah, the TV show. Yeah, the Sharks. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it a in. good thing. It's a good thing. Like, I know how to interpret what you said. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like. I, let me see. What, what could sound like what he just said? Oh, does, yeah. I know what you mean. Now. It does, though. I speak a foreign language. And Chris, like, oh, wait, don't worry. But everybody's like, what? What are you saying? Chris, like, no. Oh. It's like, I, I got I, it. I got it. I got <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we got to be serious. This is a serious, serious song. Is, is it? Oh, yeah. About, a, about so, an alien. Tell me about it. <laughs> so, like, I thought, was it the first or was it the last song where I thought you had said something to the effect that that he, I thought you were just saying he, and I thought it was, this, but he will, he wants to try to save the earth. He wants to do what he can to save the earth. I thought That's you had right. that. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, so I was following along and I was thinking you were talking about Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. So if he's only just coming down, like he's making himself known now in this third song, then who's, yeah. who the hell was the guy in the second or first song that you thought, well, he was already sort of like established and trying to like save the earth. Um, well, let me say. And then is Ziggy Stardust a good guy? Like in this song, yeah. is he a good guy or is he putting radar guns to people's heads and he wants to like, you know, make love? No, he's saying, put your ray gun to my head. Keep your electric eye. Oh, put your, right. Put your radar gun, gun to my head. Right. Keep ray your gun. electric eye on my, keep electric eye on me, babe. Yep. Your electric eye. What is he, what is he saying there? The electric I, eye. I, you're really grilling me on this. <laughs> like, I thought I knew what I was going to say. Um, you might want to edit out all that stuff. We're going back and forth about the, uh, about the, uh, whether, whether he appears in song one, two or three. Um, I should have said, I should have actually 
pinpoint uh, been more specific and said this is this is the first song in his voice he's introducing himself kind of you know well i gotta tell you man him. this ziggy this voice um this bowie voice in this song this was the uh when I, you know, when I think about, it, I guess a few songs. This is rock and roll voice, right? This was this the Bowie rock and roll voice that I know. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. It's a rock and rolling bitch, according to the word. Because the first one was a different voice, more like sort of stripped down, kind of more vulnerable, sort of a different, like you yeah, know, maybe talking. even more like a Davy Jones kind of guy, you know, singing. Maybe not so much, you know, whatever, Wait whatever that means. Wait, you making a joke there? No, I'm not trying. But what I'm saying is that Wait, you know what his name is, really. Yeah, I know Bowie. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you talked about the guy from the monkeys. No, I'm not making a joke. No, no. But I'm saying is that, you know, that could have been just Davy Jones, you know, just the guy yeah. who was born as Davy Jones, you know, just getting in front of the mic and just singing that song. Well, it was. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, then the second one was just kind of, you know, real soulful, kind of real having fun type of yeah. started sounding a little bit like the Bowie, you know, but still a little different, you know, maybe because the song was so different, you know, um, I think mm -hmm. I told you how we're just, you know, just if I put myself back at that time, listen to that song, you know, I was like, wow, you know, this probably sounds so different. Like, you know, I don't think anything, just the way the instruments were kind of all blending together. And I talked about like that Bowie right, sound. Right, You So you, you were saying how there was like, it would kind of came at you like a monolithic kind of sound. Yeah. With all the instruments together. But you put it best for this third song, the Bowie rock and roll voice, you know, that, yeah. I'm yeah. glad I was able to nail something down finally. <laughs> and <laughs> so, all over like, that's him. Yeah, cool. And, um, and I mean, I wrote his voice. So I got, it was just so powerful, you know? Like, it's when he was singing those couple lines, again, like, you know, keep your electric eye. Just the way he's just belting those, those, those words out, you know? So powerful, you know? Just, I forget how strong of a voice he actually had, you know? Because there was style. But man, he had a lot of, you know, he had a lot of something behind that, you know. Um, he, he could really behind that style, out. he could That's really nice. sing. Yeah. 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 When yeah. it called for it, yeah. It's another thing. He seems to always. He's got so many singing, different singing styles, but he knows pretty much, or it's just my taste. I don't know that he seems to know which one to use at any given time. And tell me more about Mick Ronson because I definitely know that name, right? That's the guitar player. I don't player. know a lot about. I don't know a lot about. That him. was his guitar player for the Ziggy, you know, yes. for that band. He was right? also, I, I believe, he was also in the other band that originally recorded this. Um, right, uh, Arnold Coyne. Is he still alive? I don't think so. He was a hell of a guitarist. Yeah, absolutely. hell of a guitarist. Yeah. I'm looking um, up now. So you don't know really much about him. <laughs> I'm looking it up now. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't. Being that this is a this is a review of a David Bowie song, and not a Mick Bronson song, uh, per se. He died in '93. Wow. Forty-six to '93. So, uh, wow. That was young, okay. right? A young guy. Yeah. I would be interested um, to know. Um, how much uh, creative license that he had uh, on this song and the other ones too. Um, if Bowie, um, I'm just, I'm just questioning that like asking this based on like thinking that Bowie was a controlling guy, but because, you know, when you think about it, even that little, little instrument, you know, like he, uh, that sort of whistle thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I can't help but think that there are all these kind of like, there's a roadmap or so like a blueprint that's, that's forming in Bowie's head. And then he has to like has to, stick with he has that. to then figure out how he's gonna like put that yeah. into yeah. reality, right? So it's like I got right. this, I got this particular part and the sound. What can I get that's gonna like replicate that? That's gonna make that, you know. Um, and so I just wonder, with maybe not being so controlling, but just being so like knowing knowing what he wants, you know. Right. Um, if if how much you know, because 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 Ronson's guitar is like amazing, and so you know, was it almost like just doing what Bowie kind of like, you know, said, you know, I, I want this sound. I want this or mm -hmm. only because, you know, he just sounds like that kind of like really innovative type of like guitarist that, you know, was, there was just a little bit something more to his guitar playing. Yeah, you know? I, I would think so. I, uh, you know, I, it's, I wish I watched it already. There's, there's a Bowie, there's a Bowie documentary out. I don't forgot on which streaming service, but I meant to watch it 
especially since we're doing this. Okay. This album. Um, so I really, you know, I don't have, I don't, really don't have a lot of insight into his creative process and I would like to uh, gain some of that knowledge. Yeah. Um, and probably they would cover that because I know he did a lot with Mick Ronson in the early days and he's collaborated with so many people that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's still a valid question what you've got because I would think no other musician would have any problems uh, collaborating with David Bowie with letting him just take over in a way. So, um, Mm. you know, and not in a, not in a way of like, I'm cowering from him, but more like, Hey, this David Bowie, I'll leave it to him. Absolutely. The guy's brilliant. And this is, you know, of course with Bowie, he changes from song to song at that level. Um, Yeah. But uh, on a bigger level, uh, when he would change his, he changed his whole persona, his whole theatrical persona, right? Yeah. Uh, along with um, his general, his general sound, or uh, which sometimes there was overlap between them, the sound and the, the persona. You, you know, there wasn't a strict demarcation, but when it changed, but um, you know, we're just talking about about changing your style and so on. So he would change the whole persona and it was a more theatrical thing to him because that's who he would be when he went and did his live shows. Right. Right. So it's a whole, it's a whole reinvention for him. Not only the music, but I'm going on to a whole, I'm going to be somebody different. In a yeah. Sense, like yeah. an actor doing a role. So and it must get pretty tiring to do the same one all the time. And then, okay, I've, I've investigated, you know, this, uh, I've, 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 I've opened this many nights under the, as this character. It's time to go on to a new play kind of thing. As great of a song as Ashes to Ashes is, which is, I think it is right up there as like my favorite Bowie song. Um, I think what also helps that song. And I think the song could stand on its own. Down suit. But that video, that clown suit, <laughs> that was, that like has stuck with me to this day. Like, you know, I cannot yeah, that shake was a that. Real, that was that really, image. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, when there's a darkness and he's on the beach and he's walking with this old lady who's supposed to be his mom. And she's kind of going, you know, you know, and my mother said right. to get things done, it's fading out. Right. And like they're walking along the beach and he's kind of like walking with the clown suit. And she's like, yeah. I mean, and so I think there's like water or something or dark. Like, I'm like. Oh my God, like the image, like, you know, talk about like um, uh, a vision or something like, yeah. you know, um, art, like right in front of yeah. you, boom, that's you know? A, yeah, and that that's was him. More, he was more of a Harlequin, Harlequin in that one than uh, a clown. Sorry, getting technical. Yeah, well, but, people, um, I think, kind of lazily will say, you know, maybe not lazily, but I mean, it, it's easy to say a clown suit because it kind of has like a pointy hat, yeah. you know, it's got the frilly yeah. stuff, whatever. So, yeah. But it's actually um, like like in a, 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 that was a, a big um, a big uh, subject for Picasso was the Harlequins yeah. uh, period when he was real young so and it was big in art so I'm sure Bo, Bowie knew that because he was a visual artist too. We should just do a whole episode. You know what I mean? I know we both know that song. Someone's got to just react to it. I love that song. I think that's a great song. I mean, it's going to be one, and it's not going to be like, well, I haven't heard it in a few years. I'm telling you, I go to that like every once in a while. So it's just a beautiful, it's an amazing song. But maybe we'll what the hell, songs, man? Maybe we'll do some songs off that album and hit that one when we do it. Okay. I All think right. it's on Scary Monsters. Let's so see. wrap this. Oh, I'm sorry. No, so sorry. so try to put a bow to this uh, song. Um Boat, <laughs> boat is Bowie song. <laughs> I didn't even try for that one, but um, how do you sort of cap this off? You know, because I mean, Chris, you and I could really talk about Bowie, you know, forever and ever. You know, just have this recording and just go on and on and on. But um, yeah. But you know, the great thing is that there's like what 13, 12 more songs. Um, up there's ahead? um, there's fourteen altogether, so we got eleven to go. It's like eleven to go. All yeah. right, well, so we're we'll gonna have to more to talk next, about. Yeah. 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 So, but you know, you had the final word on the song. Uh, just, I, I really like the song. It was good listening to it again in depth. And, yeah. um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's a standout on this album. However, there's some coming up that I think are just fantastic. So uh, I don't think there's a bad song on the album. Actually, I would call this, uh, one of my, I would, I would say this is a perfect album. 
in my, my opinion, of course, it's an opinion. So far, it's sounding like that. And I know I gave you the final word, but just to say that um, it's I'm, I'm remembering, too, that in the in the comments threads for those three uh, other two songs that we've done, this song has been dropped. Like, you know, Moon Age, yeah. Moon Age, Moon, you know. So Moon Age, I, I think wait for that. Scene, wait for that. I yeah. think this is one scene as, um, uh, like you had mentioned in the beginning of this video of, of our discussion here, uh, that you're surprised you never heard it before because a lot of people look at it as, hey, this is, this is really a standout. So, yeah, I think that's what you're getting at there. Oh, absolutely. And also, I think with the album, too, I, I think that, you know, I think about Sgt. Peppers for some reason. OK, you know, you had, you know, yeah, Sgt. Peppers, the song, and then you had Little Help for My Friends. Right. And those are really good songs. And then you had Losing the Sky with Diamonds. You had yeah, like that third. Like, wait, you, oh, it was third like, song, right. it was almost like that third. And then almost like that. Boom. Like. Whoa! What is this? <laughs> you know, like, well, also, you know, that's an interesting comparison because now, now this song is kind of trippy. The Bowie song, right? Yeah, for some reason, all of a sudden yeah. you're getting into an alternate kind of world. It, it just and away right. he's from anyway, right? What he is, um, and in Lucy in the Sky with Diamond, all of a sudden you're on an acid trip, you know, after <laughs> two two normal sound, you know. Sub, uh, subject matter normal, wise song. that's kind of what i meant right that the other two songs were like absolutely like fantastic they were great right loved them enjoyed them this one there was just a whole different sort of vibe the whole it's to me it's on a little different level than those other two and um and like that's why i was kind of making that comparison yeah mm -hmm. so i'm 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 excited now i'm going to get into a little territory i think you know because there's some familiar territory because i know a few songs from this album so that's um, okay. but i can't wait to get into those two you know because now I'm, I'm really listening to with with the with the new year you know um you know the way we're doing this whole thing so um so yeah all right cool so i'll take us out and just say uh chris the, again great idea man to do this and uh oh. And we'll say to everyone, thanks a lot for um, <laughs> got my fist up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for watching this episode, you know, and hope that you um, and if you haven't watched the other two. OK, like I said, I'm going to put that all in the notes section down below and uh, go check them out. And um, and I really hope you like this episode, too. And if you do hit the like button, and if you haven't yet subscribed, it'd be cool. Subscribe, be part of this family into the music going up, up, up. And that said, we'll see you on the next episode of Into the Music.